everybody, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to make an attempt at painting a beautiful uh, sunset kind of on a little bit of water. And uh, I know it seems a little bit daunting, but uh, I think, I hope it will work out just fine and you'll have the courage to try it too. Now, I've got a 16 by 20 linen canvas that I'm starting with and I'm putting a little medium down on here. The medium I have is about a third uh, stand oil and uh, two-thirds odorless thinner. It's a little bit of a hot day. This is why we haven't been producing a lot of uh, videos lately because it's really stinking hot in my studio most of the time and so uh, I have to kind of watch it. I don't want to get too overheated. Anyway, I've just put a thin layer with my little paper towel. So um, I'm going to uh, begin by putting down a little bit of phthalo blue and uh, with that phthalo blue, we'll put a uh, little more medium onto my brush. This is a dark phthalo blue. And then I'm going to add a little bit of white because it's really, really a strong color. And I'm going to start over here. Now, remember, when you're doing a sky scene, the top part of your canvas will be darker in the blue. And then it will work its way down towards the horizon and become lighter as it gets closer to the horizon. Anyway, so I'm putting this in just some crisscross fashion onto the, the uh, medium. There's no other real color. I've got this, uh, this bluish color on here. I take my little rag and I'm going to wipe it down into the canvas a little bit. So I'm going to drag this down. I'm going to take out uh, and I'm going to make it lighter as it goes down towards where I think my horizon is, which is going to be closer to the bottom of the canvas rather than right in the middle. One thing you don't want to do on a landscape or anything else is divide your canvas right down the middle and put the point of focus dead center. That's just really boring and uh, it, for some reason it, it bothers people. They, they know there's something that's bothering them but they don't know what it is usually. So anyway, that's just the way it is. Now see how that kind of filters the light down towards the bottom and it's really, really pretty. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to go into my dioxazine purple. Okay, that's a really dark purple. And we'll begin uh, over here. And I'll put in a little bit of that dioxazine purple for one of our darker clouds. And all I'm doing is I'm pushing my brush flat on the canvas. And then I'm not lifting it up and putting it down. I'm not making lots of little strokes on there. I'm just I'm leaving it and then I'm just moving it as I make these little circles. And I'll make another round over here, just a little bit of a, a little formation. Go outside at sunset, you know, and uh, if you've got a good one, grab the camera and take a picture and print it off. And then really look at what it is that we're looking at as far as shapes go. Uh, I'm going to put a little, maybe just a tiny bit right here. and. Um, you know, make sure that your cloud shapes aren't just identical, you know, like <laughs> fence post cotton balls, right? All right. No fence post cotton balls. What a term is that? That's crazy. Okay. This. All right. Now, this uh, particular uh, sunset is going to be cut in the oranges and purples. Well, most of them are, you know. Okay. So, uh, so we have that. Now, I'm going to go with a little more reddish color. Uh, actually, I'm going to take a quinacridone violet with a little bit of white so that you can see what color it is. And I'm dipping it into my medium again. And we're going to go underneath it like this with the quinacridone violet. And I'm going to go around like this. That's a pretty color. Now, maybe a little bit lighter as we go. Can't go wrong with that, can you? So beautiful. Yeah. All right. And then let's see a little bit, uh, a little under here. Okay. Now before I get too far again, uh, I'm going to kind of rub this in so it's a little softer at the bottom. A little softer there. A little softer uh, right here. This would be really tough to do in acrylic because, uh, especially on a hot day. So, um, you know, you have to move so fast, even with oil. Uh, I feel like it today, anyway. So, anyway, we've got some nice soft edges. Clouds do not have 
angular sharp edges everybody don't forget and uh, let's see now I've got a little bit of I'm gonna try this a little bit of cadmium red light and a little bit of our, our violet color let's see what happens all right here we go I'm gonna come under here oh yeah that's nice so I have quinacridone violet and a little cadmium red light now cadmium red light is a little bit like an orangish color so uh, you know you want to be a little bit careful not to mix it in with that dioxazine purple because it's like putting orange and purple together if you over mix it you're gonna get kind of a brownish color so um, here unless you're looking for a brown okay and okay now the next thing I'll do is I'm going to add some um, Hansa yellow medium which is really really strong yellow and I'm going to put a lot of medium in here and then we'll add that into the bottom now I'm not really sure as I just hit that if that's the color I want so I'm going to add some white to it and a little bit more of the cadmium red light I wish you guys could see my palette but I still do not have uh, a second camera yet you know help me out here okay uh, let's see um, and the way you can do that is to watch a few more of the advertisements and uh, hopefully our dollars will add up and we'll end up with something that we can actually spend on a new camera that would be awesome okay let's see so I'm gonna go a little bit little circular pattern here and I'm adding a little bit of a glow kind of like that now before I get too far I, I do want to add a little more blue of our light blue and it, it's going to get a little bit lighter and I have some uh, interesting yellow on my brush so we'll see what happens if I come in here and I put in it's almost like a, a tealy light color I like it it's really neat and I like it so much that I want to put some more down below so let's grab a little more of that white phthalo blue and whatever is on my brush and I'm going to give it um, a little bit of a another layer of this this lighter kind of bluish green your sky isn't really really green so you don't want too green but but you do um, as it gets down closer to the horizon it can have kind of a bit of a greenish cast now a lot of times I'll use a viridian at the horizon uh, which is kind of a greenish blue and, and it really works it really works so okay I just wanted to give myself a little bit of something to play off of with these clouds a, a little bit there and uh, there now I'm going to take that rag again soften the edges down a little bit like this what I like to do at this stage is to identify our horizon now again don't put your horizon right in the middle of your canvas or your point of focus right in the middle of the canvas here either so I'm going to decide do I want it higher or do I want it lower than the mid line well I want it lower so uh, I'm going to now get into a little bit of well, I'm just going to choose uh, a little bit of transparent orange just to establish where this is going to go and I'm going to come all the way down to right about here it's really low kind of low right there and there we have uh, just kind of an idea of where this is all going to fit in like this that's the the water area here and then I'll put a little land mass coming up like this and then we'll keep working it just and I also want to put a little bit more blue into the water and it's actually going to be a little bit of a tealy blue not you know what we had up here so um, first off let's go over and I'm going to put this down like this and I'm going to make my my water line below here and grab maybe even some purple and a little bit more of the phthalo this is going to be dark on this side because I've got a land mass coming up it's going to kind of come down here and then another one this is kind of typical my son is going to be right over here well not my real son but my sunshine is going to be a little bit over here and so slightly off center over here so I'm going to make this part dark right here going down I like making my uh, kind of what I think of being my uh, reflections in a downward stroke when I start like this and actually I'm gonna add a little bit of what is that 
phthalo green. All right, let's see what happens with that. Oh, it looks like same thing what I got there. But uh, I think it'll be interesting if I put it over here a little bit. If I add a little white to that phthalo green, you'll be able to see what color it is. Check this out. Ooh, pretty. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so we'll go like this. In order to make your, your painting interesting, you need to have both dark values and light values and stuff in the middle, all right? So I'm putting the dark uh, just on the outside, partly because I'm trying to reserve this spot right here for something very, very light. And so when it's light, then in order for it to even look light, you have to have dark around it, okay? And then you use something called the complement, which means you not only have the contrast of light and dark, but you use the complement of opposites in the color wheel, all right, which is like yellow with purple around it. So we're kind of getting this bluish purple going all the way down here like this, and then we're going to play off of that a little bit. I'm going to also add some of this really super dark color into some of the uh, middle of this cloud a little bit. We're going to make it kind of float right off the, off the canvas right here. All right, good. Now, this has got to be a little darker underneath as it, as it kind of moves away from the light right here. And we're going to move into some oranges. First off, I'm going to do the same thing again, rub a little bit of that color in with my towel so that it looks nice and fuzzy and fluffy. It's more of a towel painting than it is a paintbrush painting. So the next thing we'll do is I'm going to get a little more of the oil onto my brush and I want to put in a little bit of a, a yellow streak across here. That's really super vibrant. I love it. And then down here I'm going to make it into some uh, yellow colors as we move across right here and then it, it, it would reflect into the water a little bit here. I know this sounds really crazy it's just jumping around all over the place and I want to get some cadmium orange this is not the transparent orange but it's cadmium orange and we're going to now put in a little bit let's see where I'm at I've got a little photograph that I'm using but I'm not copying it because you know, I don't, I don't want to be restrained by that where I'm going, oh, there's a little dot of white here, I've got to put that on. Now, we want to be free in our painting and we want to be able to say, oh, I like that, that kind of combination, but I'm not going to be married to it, you know. I'm just going to keep, keep it fresh and uh, really just enjoy uh, the inspiration, but I'm not going to be... Um, just totally stuck on something. I, I want to be able to, to uh, be free from it a little bit. Use it, but don't make it a copy of a photograph, especially when it's something so loose as this kind of thing. Okay, a little bit brighter, a little bit of uh, a little more white with our, our orange and Hansa yellow. And I'm going to jump on top of this cloud and give it a little bit more of a a really bright feel as the sun might be coming right up through it like this. Then on top of this we'll have a little bit of a cloud popping out uh, with the light bouncing off of it right there and have it just shoot off the side of the canvas. That'll be nice. Okay. Okay. Now uh, I'm going to brighten it up just a little bit more as we go down. We're gonna, I know it's like, whoa, it's already pretty bright. Oh well like this, and then uh, we'll come across here like this, and a little more oranges, I'm going to hit right into, I don't want to paint around my little, um, you know, my land mass that I'm, I'm thinking about, I'm just going to cut right into it, you don't want to have halos around stuff, you know when I was a beginning painter my husband would say don't paint a halo around everything, you know you think well I got to trace around that little thing I'm reserving, no, it, it, people will tell. They'll just go, oh, she painted around that. She didn't really paint that in layers. So, okay. Now, uh, while we're at it here, I'm going to just go with the yellow really, really thin. I'm going to make a nice bright, bright yellow. I'm going to just cover that right there, just for a sec. Cover that, and then I'm going to do something interesting. I hope it's been interesting up to this point, too. But, 
Uh, and then I'm going, I'm going to take my a clean towel. I'm going to dip it into my oil. And now I'm going to reserve out, I'm going to wipe out the area that I want to put where my sunshine is, okay? My sunshine. And I don't want it dead center. I want it slightly off center. So dead center would be like right about there. So I'm going to make it off center. And I'm going to now brighten it up by uh, taking out the paint so that it just kind of stains the canvas, but it isn't, um, you know, it's just not painted on so thickly that I cannot create this sense of glow. So I keep wiping out, I change uh, my towel out and I get a little bit of a clean edge and I just work that out. I make this out into a light and then I make it, I'm going to fuse it out a little bit and I might need to get another clean paper towel because this one's kind of getting a little ratty. And we go like this, okay. Now you can see how it begins to look as though it's bright. There is a trick to it, that's for sure. So uh, let's get a little bit more oil. And I'm going to get that right there in the center. The more I wipe that out, the brighter it gets. While I'm at it, I'm going to just wiggle that down into the water. In fact, I'm going to take this and uh, hopefully I won't pull that blue into it yet because I'm not quite ready for that. Pull that down a little ways this way. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a take my glove and my finger. See if that works. Yeah, that works. So uh, do this with a glove, everybody. Don't use it with your raw finger. And then you can kind of work that out a little bit in kind of a outward stroke or outward uh, little tiny circles with your pinky and and create that. And then I'm going to do it again. Keep and you can keep doing this as long as you want. And, and it just makes it kind of have a glow going outwards. And then I'll do the same thing. I'm going to add a little bit down into the water here with my little finger. Gloved. And add a little bit of a, a shimmer down into the water with my, my, uh, my glove. Sometimes that works better than a rag or brush. And then you just can lay out the paint a little bit like that. Now I'll, I'll just kind of work that out a little bit more so it looks like it's bright and wonderfully shiny. Okay, that's kind of fun. Let's get a new towel. At the end of each film, I end up with tons of paper towels just flying all over the floor sometimes because I miss the garbage. Oops, oh well. But at the end of the day, you have to pick them all up, otherwise they might explode. Yeah, that'd be fun. This time I'm going to grab a different kind of blue. This is going to be a cobalt blue. And I'm going to put this on right here as it starts going back into the water right here. And I'm going to add just a tiny bit of white so you can see that there. Keep remembering, you know, we're, we're doing a sunset, not a water painting, but uh, the water, the sunset is kind of reflecting down into the water, so I like to, to see if I can make that work. It just all works together. Uh, this time we're going to go into the cadmium orange cadmium orange. This is a, a beautiful kind of a permanent type orange rather than um, than a transparent orange. I've got to be careful as I, I don't want to get, I want to keep those colors clean, you know, so that they really bounce off of each other. So I can kind of do that. Sometimes if I, if I just do it one stroke at a time, wipe off my brush, get back into some fresh color, and then do it again and then drag it back and forth. So I want to want to make sure that I keep that nice and clean. I am one of those kind of people that don't, that I want to make sure that I have vibrant color. That's my MO, modus operandum. Uh, it's, it's kind of wild. My dad being a, a landscape painter, he uses a lot of muted colors in the background and, and brings it up forward and has this, this gorgeous, you know, point of focus. I tend to uh, to venture into the expression of wild and crazy color. It's just who I am, you know. Oh well, you decide who you are, and then figure it out. All right, uh, all right. Now our silhouettes right here. 
So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to grab some Dioxazine Purple Conacridone Violet and a tiny bit of that that uh, Thalo Green. And this is where we're going to put in a land mass with that really dark color. Starting right here. And I'm going to just kind of begin by, I've got a little bit of a chisel on this brush and I'm going to make um, just a little grouping of uh, trees. And I'll smash it down a little bit and then put a little bit of tree right here and then we kind of come up. We're just making it go up in a, you know, kind of a typical uh, land mass that you would see on the edge of the water. And basically, it's just keeping your brush straight up and down, you know, and, and you're just making these little indications of trees here with the sky behind. It's, it's just really pretty. And uh, the land right here gets a little bit more uh, more flat, more straight, so I've got to put that in right. And then, of course, it goes down into the water, so I don't worry about cutting it off right at the shoreline. I'm going to make it go down in the water anyway. So we're going to come all the way up here, make a nice little knoll. That's nice. Okay, I need to get back on to what I'm doing, which is going to be uh, putting in um, the clouds. It's all about clouds. What am I doing? I'm messing around. Now, uh, because this is the light part here, one of the things I want to emphasize is that in order to make, again, in order to make this look really, really light, I'm going to have to put something really dark next to it. And so that's really uh, an important part. So I'm going in with um, a little bit of that Gwenacridone Violet and um, kind of creating a cloud that bumps almost right up next to the, the light and kind of crosses over the, the sun light right there. And then uh, we'll just keep moving. Okay, now here's this. Um, and this gets a little bit darker right here. So I'm gonna take that Violet that's on my brush and make another little stroke right here. Okay, so you can sort of see what's happening down here. It's getting uh, more and more interesting as far as that, that sunlight. And it, it makes it just really, really nice and bright. It's the weirdest, weirdest thing. Okay. And then the mass of land is going to come across here. Connect up a little bit right there. Little streaks of bright yellow with white. When I add the white to the yellow, it actually mutes the color down. Okay, it it decolorizes it. When you add white to anything, it takes the intensity of the color out. Okay, that's all I'm going to do right now on this particular canvas. I'm going to let you go for just a second, and I will work on this for another probably 30 minutes, maybe 30 to 40 minutes. I'll let you know at the end. And we'll see just what I can get done in, a, in finishing it up a bit more. And I'll show it to you in just a moment. I'll be right back. All right, you guys. I walked away from this painting for about two days. And I came back and spent another 40 minutes or so on it. And finished it up to this point. I think I like it. And I'm going to uh, now put a signature on it. And... Uh, put it on my Etsy site at nettykstudio.etsy.com. Now this is where you can go on and check out some of my other paintings and if you so desire you can go on there and purchase one. Okay that would be super. Um, so I put on some purple and I put on some orange and I got so inspired yeah I put a little orange in my hair. You know we're artists when things get drab what do we do? We add color. Yay! So. Oh, I wanted to thank you for subscribing, everybody. Uh, we just hit 2,000 subscribers. Woohoo! Let's pop a balloon, blow a whistle, yay! Um, that really, really was encouraging when I saw that this morning as I went on. Yay! So, anyway, if you haven't subscribed already, um, don't forget to do that because you'll be notified the next time we have a lesson and you never know what we're going to be doing next. Um, we could be doing a floral, we could be doing a still life, uh, we might even tackle a portrait or another dog painting, yeah, or even a horse. We'll see. Alright, make some suggestions below as to what you'd like to see and I'll see what I can do, alright? Thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>